uh, Beyond the Dream Summit. That's going to, uh, the first uh, order of business that we're going to be addressing today is we're going to deal with the pros and cons of PLAs. What's in it for African Americans? And what does it mean for us? First of all, let me give you a brief history. This is the uh, National Association of Black Contractors, founded 35 years ago. We stand on the shoulders of great builders of civilization. The history of apprenticeships came to Europe by way of the Moors, who came to the Gibraltar Straits, beached at the uh, bottom of a cliff. Chief Jabu Tariq basically told his men to unload the ships all their belongings, burned the ships, and he pointed to a cliff in front of them that was straight up and down, and he says, victory is in front of you and the sea is behind you. They scaled that cliff and came into Europe, Spain, and ruled for 800 years. They were Moors, Muslim Moors from Spain. And they influenced Spain with all the arches and domes that you see that you call Spanish architecture. They are actually Moorish architectures, or they call them the Dome of the Rock, named after Chief Jabu Tariq. This was in 1881 when America basically brought apprenticeship programs to, from America, the system of apprenticeships by the carpenters to Chicago. And they established the apprenticeship programs. An apprenticeship is basically a commitment of an apprentice that had indentured himself to learn and master a craft. And once he masters that craft, he becomes the great builder and he becomes a master and he trains others underneath him. At that time, there was a bartering system. You earned your freedom, your, your, your uh, freedom as an apprentice. And when we brought these apprenticeship systems to America, it was under the organization of labor unions out of Chicago, Illinois. In 1991, 100 years after the apprenticeship systems were brought here in 1881, the Black Contractors Association of San Diego, Inc., a local chapter of the National Black Contractors, established its first and only African-American state apprenticeship program, accredited with the state of California and the, Depart and the U.S. Department of Labor which means that no unskilled worker can work on a project that is publicly funded unless he is properly indentured as an apprentice or that employee has to pay the full journeyman scale. And who's going to pay a unskilled worker $55, $56 an hour or $40 an hour the same as a journeyman? So the apprenticeship system allow us to put historically underemployed women and people of color into the trades. This organization was established by trade unionists 35 years ago, where we saw the need to establish an apprenticeship program for the inner city. We were master builders. We were known for building big churches and commercial buildings, some of the higher the roads, and we were pretty much the dominant workforce at that time. What you see reflective of the Latino industry was pretty much what African Americans were then. We were ones that were doing the streets. They had uh, Nash and Sons, and then there was uh, O'Bright, WW Construction, and, and several others that were out there. And I was a young builder inspired by what they had done. And then Reganomics came around and the pickings were lean. We were talking about a, a trickle-down theory. Churches became influent. They started getting funding from public agencies or banks. And the banks had an A-list. And the A-list didn't include African Americans. So the dog was not going to hunt, not in our community, not in this neighborhood, not then and not now. So we organized ourselves to go out and challenge the leadership of the church communities and we built Bayview Baptist, Christian Fellowship, St. Paul's. Some of the largest institutions that were built were being built by African Americans because that was a sweet spot for us. As most of the building trades were predominantly white males. Even though there was a criteria for inclusion and participation, under the housing, under the housing uh, trades, when I came in, I came in as a union carpenter building track houses. 
And so I want to say this as we begin to set the stage to deal with the pros and cons and what's in it for us and try to find common ground. I say PLAs have potential, but I say presently they are exclusive. And so what I want to say before we get started, we have a moderator who's going to keep the peace, Mr. Bobby Glanton Smith, who is one of the founding members of the Inner City Unilateral Apprenticeship Committee, when we went down to the state of, uh, to the California Apprenticeship Council, Bobby was there to tell the council why the African American community needed its own apprenticeship programs. It was very important. And so with that, and we had opposition from our brothers in the Carpenters Union, and so we had to make the case because building trades don't like parallel programs, and rightfully so. You can't have two carpenter unions in one town. But there's open shop, mom and pop, who chooses not to be unionized, and they don't mind paying prevailing wages when there's a prevailing wage budget. So it's like flipping the script. You, you got your guys making high wages, and all of a sudden you go to a non uh, uh, Mrs. Jones's patio or room edition, and uh, they want that uh, prevailing wage scale. You can't flip like that. So they're going to go and find and chase the money, and rightfully so. The unions have done a swell to bargain for health and welfare, and other things of that matter. So at this time, I'm going to turn it on to Bobby, turn it over to Mr. Bobby Glanton Smith, and we're going to have Mr. Tom Lemon, who is the head of the Building Trades Council. He represents all of the unions that are in San Diego County, and each one of these unions are autonomous, like we have here with us our LA chapter, Dressel Johnson, president of the LA chapter, and we have Nan uh, is also here. And we have some other dignitaries that are going to be at the table. But we'll get into that. And I want to thank uh, Vera Howell and Denisha Hunter for being here today. And I saw Jimmy Slack from Councilwoman Myrtle Cole's office. Uh, we have Shirley Hodrick from the Port Authority. Is there anyone I'm missing? And then we, and Tom has this whole barrage of uh, unionists that are going to be here today. And, uh, and I thank you, Tom, for pulling this together in such short order. Uh, but we want to get into the nitty gritty of why and what and how we're going to do things and make things differently. Mr. Bobby, Bobby Glanton Smith. <laughs> okay, we go way back like the seats in a Broham Cadillac, me and this brother here. It's uh, an honor to be back in San Diego. I presently live in Los Angeles and uh, still do some uh, consulting work with uh, the construction industry. Um, what we want to accomplish today is to have meaningful discourse, not just a lot of blather, but you know, really trying to just peel this onion back and figure out ways in which we can have greater participation by people who look like the folks in this room. So without any further ado, with the agenda being, how do we go from where we are right now, which is a sorry state of affairs when it comes to participation by people of color? to more engaged in the prosperity that construction creates. So, uh, Brother uh, Hamid, uh, yeah, one, one quick note of uh, order. Um, we want to speak you know, to each other and not at each other today and, and try to really get to a point where we have something that we leave here with today that, that moves us closer to the goals and objectives we all mutually share. So, with that being said, uh, our first speaker will be Mr. Tom Lemon. Mr. Tom, then put your hands together for him. Yeah. Hey, Ronnie. Is this on? You know, let us see. Okay, there you go. Okay. I'd like to start just with a, a, a quick introduction of some of the folks that I've asked to come, all experts in the field. Uh, from San Diego Unified, George Harris. Uh, he runs the entire... Uh, uh, bond program for uh, San Diego Unified. Next to him is Ivory Anderson. Ivy Anderson uh, 
at one time worked for the largest engineering firm in the world, uh, did actual PLA uh, work with San Diego Unified, and since then has branched out, uh, created his own uh, business, and uh, is actually overseeing project labor agreements uh, in, in, a, in a couple different districts. Uh, Kevin Alvin, uh, former veteran, uh, also a journeyman uh, electrician with the IBEW and uh, I believe treasurer of the EWMC, the Electrical Workers Minority Con uh, Contractors Associate Caucus. And Carol Kim, uh, she's with the Building Trades. She does both political work and political outreach. She has a background in grant writing uh, for, for districts and, and uh, workforce training. And then, of course, uh, the good Dr. Murtisa Baksamusa, uh, who is responsible, and, and we're going to get to maybe one of the most important parts of this conversation today. He was responsible for the living wage ordinance in San Diego. He actually pinned that and helped push that through the city council. He also uh, wrote the prevailing wage ordinance uh, uh, in San Diego when San Diego adopted a prevailing wage ordinance. Uh, and I appreciate you guys. Uh, we were all ready to come yesterday or tomorrow, but uh, we're here today. Right. I appreciate that. Okay. And then myself, I'm, I'm just a pipe cover. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm a, I'm a journeyman uh, heat frost insulator and asbestos worker. Grew up in San Diego, uh, worked the shipyards, uh, and, you know, became leadership in my home local, became leadership of the building trades. Nothing, nothing special about me other than I surround myself with some really, really smart people that, that help me guide uh, the boat down the road. So... We touched on prevailing wage. Uh, you mentioned, uh, Brother Hamid, uh, how that works for apprenticeship. I'd like to spend just a little bit more time digging into that sure. because that really is the nexus of, of how apprenticeship works. So when you work on a, uh, a prevailing wage uh, a project, there is a, there is a state law. that says 20% of all man hours go to train the next generation of workforce. And, uh, you, you know, whether you're uh, a unilateral program, uh, a.k.a. a non-union program, just, you know, to be clear, like the, the Black Contractors Association has, or like the AGC has, or the Associated Builders, you get, you, you get to go on these jobs and pay people less, quite frankly, because you're training them. So, knowing that, knowing that, 20% of all man hours can go to apprentices. Obviously, apprentices is where most people learn their trade. That's where Brother Hamid learned his trade. That's where I learned mine, through an apprenticeship program. Well, let's talk about apprenticeships. And let's talk about apprenticeships in a way that's very global. And when I talk about global, and we're talking about training, and we look at the entire United States, there is only one organization in the entire United States that spends more money, more training dollars, training apprentices than the building trades, the union crafts. Just for fun, kind of engage people, because I know, I know at some point you guys are going to be asking lots of questions. Anybody have any idea who that might be? Hmm. U.S. military, federal government, only people in the entire United States that spend more money on training. You take the state of California, let's just move it a little bit closer. And you take every apprentice in every different trade, over 800 apprentices, apprenticeship programs in the state of California. You take all of them, put them all together, and you line them all up and say, who's graduating the most apprentices? I can tell you, 92% of all apprentices who graduate from programs in the state of California come from union apprenticeship programs. Now. You talk about folks, to your point, who look like you, people of color, women. 95% of those folks are coming from union apprenticeship programs that graduate in, into, in, into the workplace. So we're doing a really, really good job. I think we could do better. I, I know that there's been things in the past that have created some serious barriers for people of color. I totally understand that. When 90% when of, of your 
folks that you're bringing into the program are, are finding the information out from their cousin, their uncle, their brother, and all those folks are white, there's a high probability that a lot of white folks are finding their way into the trades. We need to trade that, change that. And I think we have in a substantive way. Today in the state of California, only one third of apprentices who are in apprenticeship programs today are white. Just, I want to just settle, settle that down just for a second. That means that we are reaching out into the community. Maybe not as effectively as we, we could or should, but we certainly are taking the steps forward. Now, I know we're going to talk about specifically the San Diego Unified Project Labor Agreement, and while I'm no lawyer, I've negotiated a lot of project labor agreements. I understand the nuts and bolts of them. There's pieces of them I don't. Uh, Brother Harris is, is a lawyer and, and uh, knows that agreement inside and out. But one of the things that's really important about that agreement that, that we put in there was a commitment to communities with high unemployment and poverty. And sadly, we're in that community right now. By census track, based in, on the 2010 census, we took the 10 most uh, impacted communities, most of them communities of color, and said those are the, the, where we want to go and visit and make sure that we create opportunities for apprentices in those areas. Well, we've done that. We've done that in a substantial way. Uh, nearly in the last year, nearly 2,000 folks from your community have worked on San Diego Unified School Districts. Over almost 35% of the entire workforce at, that are working under a project labor agreement at San Diego Unified are coming from D4. So with that, I'll just maybe take a little bit of, uh, of a slowdown. I don't want to, I, I think that's a pretty good introduction, I hope. So. Well, Tom, let me, let me uh, commend you on your 35% participation from District 4. But in my, re my last recollection, according to the workforce utilization reports that I get from public agencies on the contractors that are doing the hiring, they don't represent African Americans in any substantial number. And one of the things that we're here to do is to fix that. And I have basically charged trade unions with nepotism, which is their, uh, one of their greatest moments is to be, be able to say that we help father the son, and you said it best, you know, you're going to have dominant, if you have a dominant uh, white labor union, you're going to have dominant apprentices. If you have a fire department that's Irish, you're going to probably have Irish fire departments. Or you're going to have an uh, Italian police de department because of nepotism. And what we have seen, and we realize that we're pretty much on a, a border town, but the dominant workforce in San Diego is Latino. Uh, with the electrical trade, the dominant uh, apprenticeships are Caucasians. And so we see the uh, historical imbalance of African Americans getting into apprenticeships. Now you represent building trades which are not necessarily parallel to the BCA, which we have a carpenter program, and there's a carpenter union. And so when you talk about zip code target hiring, what we need to fix is who's doing the targeting in that zip code. If Sanchez is going after Sanchez, or Billy Bob is going after Billy Bob in North County, or we have a Korean outreach person that's familiar with the Korean community, you're going to have Koreans or Latin, uh, Asians, pardon me, uh, that's going to basically be dominant in that, uh, that trade. And there's no shame in that game. The problem is, is that African Americans have been seen as not participating. Now, the problem with the project stabilization agreement, union programs are state and federal certified, is it not? Yes. Is that correct? That's correct. And legally, you can't work on a public project unless you are a registered state-approved apprentice. The National Association of Black Contractors Apprenticeship Program under the BCA, Inner City Unilateral Apprenticeship Program, is state and federal approved, is it not? Can I get an amen? Oh, yeah, it's approved. Okay. So, I'm following. yet and I, still, I know where you're going. under the PLA, it says that only a union apprentice can work on this project, which means I have a driver's license to drive out throughout southeastern San Diego, but I bet not go across the tracks over to La Jolla because my license is no good. 
We say that that's akin to Jim Crow, being a Jim Crow child born in the 55 and living under Jim Crow laws or mannerism for 10 years, I know segregation when I see it. I know discrimination and I know exclusion. Although I'm proud and, and, and I have sons that are unionists, and I am a unionist, but I have a program that is, happens to be the only African American state and federal approved apprenticeship program in the corner, in the, in the country, and we cannot work on San Diego Unified School District, we can't work on SDG&E projects, our contractors and our apprentices, unless they're trade unionists. We can't work, and which we do have trade unionists that are working on those projects, like Victor Ross, and we have some others that are doing it, and some that have signed PLAs, like Wendell Stimley, for a job specific. We can't work on the Sweetwater School District, Grossmont School District. We are being painted in a corner, and we're hollering for help. We're saying that we do not want this historic program to be closed out because of some mandated PLA that says that you can only work on this job if you are a building trades apprentice program. That is our problem and that's our dilemma. How do we fix that? So I want to start with, with the very beginning, your, your statement, because I don't want you to collude facts. Yes, it's a travesty. There is not more uh, contractors of color working on projects at the city, uh, at, at the district. That's a fact. We all recognize that. I cannot control that. My labor agreement that I have cannot control that. So, so the fact that, that, that contractors uh, of color, uh, and, and I'll say this irreverently and I'll probably get hit, hit up for it later, because I, 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 I can't always just work through what I refer to as the alphabet soup, the MEBs, the, 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 all the different letters. Um, those contractors are not, there aren't enough of them, and they're not being successful getting enough work to, 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 to make a mark on, on, the, on the barometer. I think we all recognize that, I mean. Now, when we talk about apprenticeships, that's a completely different story. And project labor agreements, by law, say that, uh, ha have, have some real basic uh, common sense <clears throat> things. One is, both union and non-union contractors alike uh, can bid on them. They, they, can, they can go after the work, win the work. Mm -hmm. so, so by law, that, can, that happens. By law, they can't discriminate. They can't discriminate against people of color, people of religion. That's in the law. That's, that's what project labor agreements are. So, so those are some protections there. Um, what project labor and, and we're talking about staying on the law track. Any agency, any, any developer, any, anybody can go to the market and pick the very best programs. That's what the law says. And San Diego Unified and George, I might defer to you. Look, I'm the, hot, the hardest wait, wait, one, wait, man. Wait, 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 sitting wait, wait, right wait, over wait, there. Wait, 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 San, San Diego Unified yeah. was sued. Okay. By, by, by the monster of contractor associations, the Associated General Contractors. Anybody in here from Associated General Contractors? Stand up and represent yourself. Hey, there you are. Set the table here, Pete. 